Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash this weekend for a free $200 credit. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's our startup of the week, a fascinating startup that Kate showed me, uh, Kate Gardner just showed me, called Rebel Mouse, captured my imagination, and clearly that of Chris Dix and Fred Wilson and um, Howard Lindzen and a number of other people who use and or have invested in the service. It's a fascinating startup that I think has great potential. Rebel Mouse on This Week in Startup this week. The startup of the week. I mean, it's like the branding is crazy. This Week in Startup, Startup of the Week. Stick with us. Ah, uh, hey everybody, hey everybody, it's me, Jason Calacanis, and you are tuned into This Week in Startups, the Startup of the Week edition. Every week, we pick a startup that's under 18 months old, and we meet the founder, and we discuss why they're building what they're building. What's the reason they've started this project? What's the reason they're dedicated 12, 18 hours a day, in my estimation, to building something in the universe, in a universe filled with amazing products, and let's face it, a lot of garbage, disgusting, just terrible products. But why are people taking all this time to put more stuff out into the universe when there's so much out there? They must have a reason. That's what we want to know. Why? Why are you building something new in a world where there's so much out there? There must be a reason. It must be better in some way, correct? Well, we're going to find out from Paul Berry, the CEO and founder of Rebel Mouse, a site which I find, frankly, very fascinating. And if you're going to build one of these companies that's going to change the world, you really need to have a partner um, in the legal issues. And that partner should be Walker Corporate law. And Scott Walker, I've known for a couple of years now. He's a real mensch of a guy. I, I know a lot of uh, startups that have used him as an attorney, and they all rave about Walker Corporate Law because it's a boutique law firm that specializes in representing entrepreneurs and startups. And he charges reasonable rates. In fact, he will do fixed fees. He encourages it. That's how crazy this guy is. He's not like a pred predatory you know, attorney looking to just just pound you with bills month after month and just suck the life out of your startup. No, he wants to see you succeed. Scott Walker's a good guy, and you can call him directly. 310-288-6667. 310, that's the Los Angeles area code, 288-6667. Or visit Walker Corporate Law and go ahead and experience uh, just law practice at its best, startup law practice at its best. No junior associates handling your project to get on the job trading. No. Scott has recruited a group of amazing attorneys, again, specializing in startups, and they have 10 to 20 years experience from some of the biggest firms out there. And let me tell you something, those big firms, they come with big bills. So you got to be careful out there. If you start up, you got to conserve capital and uh, you got to put it to use in, in an intelligent way. And I got to tell you, Scott encouraging fixed fees is a great thing because those billable hours can add up and... Scott's the kind of guy who will stay on the phone with you, you know, as long as you need to understand an issue, take you to lunch, have coffee. He's just, like, not a high-pressure, like, run-the-clock-up-on-you kind of guy. He's a in-it-for-the-right-reasons kind of guy, and that's why uh, I've become friends with Scott Walker, and he's just a real mensch, like I said. Everybody thank at Scott Ed Walker on Twitter, and uh, go ahead and visit walkercorporatelaw.com. Call 310-288-6667. 310-288-6667. And, um, and tell them your Uncle Jason sent you. Thanks, Scott, for supporting This Week in Startups, Start Up of the Week edition. Okay. I found out about Rebel Mouse from Kate Gardner, who's a friend of mine. She said, oh, have you seen this? I said, no, I haven't seen it. And she showed it to me. And I was like, oh, that's something I've always wanted, a way to aggregate a bunch of the different services I use uh, into, like, one, you know, sort of homepage, if you will, like the Yahoo homepage of old. And I said, who's the CEO of this company? I need to meet him. Bring him to me, or her in that case. Uh, and Paul Berry was that CEO. Paul, welcome to the program. Thank you. Very happy to be here. Uh, it's, it's great to have you on the program. Tell me, what is Rebel Mouse? Why did you create it? So Rebel Mouse is a social front page for anything and anyone. Um, and I was CTO of Huffington Post before I took this on. Um, I ran product and design, and I uh, took it from five, uh, you know, of the last five, six years. Uh, it was one uh, year in, uh, and, um, and uh, we were three million uniques a month. Um, sorry, I'm just going to... 
Sorry. I Is somebody distracting you? Through, someone came in through the office not realizing what we're doing. <laughs> no so, problem. Um, Keep sorry going. about that. So um, the idea is that people have spent a lot of time trying to figure out what should be a good front page. And I think that there's a, there's a few things that are available now today that make what has been a complicated and expensive uh, process and can make it actually something that you can just take a few clicks and have a beautiful site. Um, and so Rebel Mouse is meant to be a full publishing platform. Um, you can add slideshows, you can add video, you can microblog on it. But the, uh, the reason why so many people have left behind their blogs is because they're trying so hard to be active on Facebook and Twitter. And now, you know, five years ago, if you had a blog post that was three weeks old, you'd be fine with that. But it starts to feel really old now. The push towards real time um, has made this, this longer blog post that you took a long time writing um, feel out of date too fast. So the idea is that curation plus original content is something that's extremely compelling. And when you take all the work you've been doing on Facebook and Twitter and you make that your curation and you make that beautiful on your front page, then you can apply the formula because you're not working with a blank page anymore. You can apply the formula of ordering a page, which I don't think anyone has given to the masses, uh, which is a mix of recency um, and popularity and then strategic judgment or editorial vision. So what is the top thing that you have to say? And that should be the thing in Splash. And while we have great algorithms that help you choose that without choosing, it's really important that you're able to move something into that top spot and then freeze it. So other people that have tried to do social aggregation have made it sort of, here's what you have and you take it or leave it. But this is, Rebel Mouse is really intended to be the starting point towards that and then make it incredibly easy to just move things around the page, edit, turn something that was a micro post, an Instagram photo into a blog post, et cetera. Yeah, so, so here- Does that make sense so far? It does. Um, and for those folks who are watching the video, you can see here um, is the Jason Calacanis page and I've pulled in my Twitter, my Tumblr, uh, my Pinterest, and uh, my Facebook, I guess. And if I want to um, freeze a post, here is the, I've frozen the post about investing in uh, Red Tricycle, who was the startup of the week a couple of weeks ago. Um, and yeah. and I, I clicked the freeze button here. And so there's a little, it automatically pulls everything together into one page from all my social networks in a Pinterest kind of way, like that box design. And then gives you the ability to move it around or freeze yep. it. So here is the Jose um, yep. uh, writing about the launch festival. I decide, oh, that's something I want to freeze at the top. I can leave it there. But this Gangnam style, you know, YouTube story um, that I'm quoted in from New York Magazine, I, that's not frozen. So that will decay and move down the page, correct? Yes, you got it. Totally right. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a more powerful Pinterest, would you say? Well, there's a, there's a few things that I think make it different uh, from other things that are out there. One of the things that we're doing is really trying to power the open web. So if you go to nowthisnews.com or laterventures.com or crunchscroll.com or three different examples, um, what we want to do is at rebelmouse.com forward slash you should always be free. And we have some really exciting features that will get it, make it more engaging than it already is and make it more sticky and more viral. Um, but we really do feel, I've, I feel strongly that people have wanted their domain names for good reasons and hmm. for bad reasons. They've given up on those domain names or spent too much time and money for it to really be a good return on investment. Uh, but Rebel Mouse makes it extremely easy to power a domain or to embed this front page so that whether you're a startup and you have a blog mm. or um, now this news is a mobile first startup company. Yep. So suddenly they realize, wait, we could have a beautiful front page that reflects all our work and without affecting budget at all. Mm. Um, so I think there's a lot of cases where this just is the much better blog or much better front page for your company, for your cause, for you as an individual. 
So now I'm Twitter. taking, that means I take my rebel mouse and I put it on nowthisnews.com or is the Now This News app actually syndicating rebel mouse as in its own app or are they just double publishing? No, now this news now takes, so they have paid editors because they're a video news company, mm -hmm. but um, they're tweeting and Facebook posting their best content, whether it's on BuzzFeed or YouTube, etc. Mm -hmm. And so now this news dot com becomes a single place that you can see it all come together. Got it. So it's just editors using the tools. What, you know, I've worked with editors for a long time because of HuffPost. And so this truly is the next generation of the t of tools that make it extremely easy easy to publish and to move things around on a page and get stats back that says this story is not clicking as well in Splash as the last story, et cetera. So these things are just tools that everybody, whether we have a lot of Etsy users who love making the Rebel Mouse page their front page to their Etsy shop, um, or we have like as, as varied as big investors. Uh, making their home page this because you're suddenly seeing the vibrant portfolio companies and the news that they have um, or celebrities also using it we've got uh, the Sacramento Kings use it to show all their activity and uh, so what's really nice in when we're trying to make the open web a better place that is more engaging and that has a network effect um, is that we're seeing these really amazing use cases, super diverse from each other, even in the first 200,000 signups. Uh, and, and when you look back on the, and as I'm, I pulled up the Sacramento Kings here, and um, I can see they're basically taking their Twitter account, their Facebook, and, and they've made it like their homepage. So you can just get a range of different yeah. content. Um, and it does seem like this um, Pinterest-like uh, experience of just little nuggets of appetizers, short attention span that you can drill down into has become the predominant way to yeah. peruse the web. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's got to be that mix of you have to have something big to say, something, you know, if you have nothing to say, people move along. So that's why that splash story is very different from a Pinterest style where each module receives the same attention. But, it, you know, you have to have all your content. And what's been wonderful to see is that people who connect their Twitter or Facebook immediately see it kind of justifies all the work they've done. Some people call it like looking in a mirror for the first mm. time because what they haven't realized is they have been curating a world vision and it does look like them, that abstract version of them. Um, and they didn't understand curation until the power of curation until then they're seeing this on a rebel mouse page or some people understood it but finally can show it to other people. Um, so social media managers uh, and social media agencies suddenly have a very powerful way to be the entire public presence and mm. take over the front page of their company site or launch a campaign on the fly uh, with a website that backs it, et cetera, because it used to take a lot of time and money to do these things, but now it's super fast and free. And I noticed there's a lot of different designs. I mean, the, the, the CMS, I guess what I would call a pre-CMS, like the CMS that comes before you publish, yeah. seems to be extremely powerful. Can you, can you walk us through that a little bit and how that works, the sort of how do you pick on your dashboard, what it's going to look like, and what you pull in? Yeah, exactly. It is. Thank you. Um, we've spent a lot of uh, hard work on the engine, the hard engineering things we've done. One is just being able to parse these links and pull the right beautiful image or right video and then weed out all the rest that was just chatter uh, is a fairly, we've gotten really good at that and that's a fairly sophisticated technology. We're always getting better at duplicate detection, which isn't just about weeding out the duplicates, but if you rarely share to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but suddenly do with one piece of content, then we see that as a large signal. So we're, we're using all the signals we can to separate out the noise and, and help you organize the page uh, correctly. But what's really vital, you know, at HuffPost, hyper-efficiency for editors was always a super important development uh, prong in the roadmap. And this has taken it that next level where, like, Literally, my six-year-old daughter uh, has been spending about an hour a day 
on her own Rebel Mouse, where she takes all the photos of the family and is rewriting headlines. Um, so it's meant, you know, Eric Hippo is the chairman, and uh, and and he was our CEO at Rebel at uh, Huff Post. Uh, I'm, you know, a few feet away from him in this office. Uh, and and uh, he was saying something which has become like a great defining statement for us in terms of how we design is that enterprise and individuals are using the same tools now. And so the goal of Rebel Mouse is to be that social publishing tool that everybody uh, accepts as whether you're a department in a big company and you want to show off what you've done uh, or you're pulling together the full intranet for the company or you're launching a product that the use cases are, are tremendous as long as the tools are extremely simple um, but have the option to become advanced and powerful. And it really, that is the nature of this. You can take it as a, it almost like automatically does it for you where you just, whatever you're doing on Facebook yeah. and whatever gets put there, you dedupe it pretty cleverly, which I think is brilliant. So if I post something from Instagram to Facebook and Twitter, I'm not going to see it three times. Um, yeah. But if you really do want to drill down, you can look at the um, statistics on each story. Here I don't have any because I really haven't been promoting this. Um, but I can, or maybe that's just because it's hourly. Yeah. I haven't really, I don't think I've tweeted my Rebel Mouse page yet, rebelmouse.com slash Jason Calcanis. But when I do, I'll be able to see how many page yeah. views it gets on each of these services. Is that correct? You'll be able to see overall stats on how the site is doing. Mm -hmm. But the thing that, but we'll probably let you just plug in Google Analytics to see that in an apples to apples way. There's no reason for us to do custom stuff mm -hmm. there. The custom analytics that we're doing, you can't get anywhere else. And that's to help you decide if the story you put up at the top is clicking as well as the normal story, the uh -huh. average story does there. So if you think about it, you guys could use Rebel Mouse for this week in startups. And the splash story would be the most recent interview you did. Right. And then you'd be looking at it and saying, oh, you know, well, Paul was a great interview and I had a lot of fun, but Howard Lindzen is, uh, is killing it still. He's the top recorder. And that sort of instinct, whether it's for commerce or whether it's for a product that you're launching or if it's a media company, it's the same st sort of stuff you want to know, which is if this is my splash or if this is in the top right, uh, how's it doing compared to other stories in that spot, which is very different from a heat map or just overall UVs. Uh, and the fact that you can put it on your own domain name actually makes that possible. So I guess who Rebel Mouse is co in competition with is an interesting question uh, to ask you because you have a consumer and a prosumer and a professional platform being built here at the same time. Who are you competing with? Well, <clears throat> I don't know if it's totally cheesy for me to say this, but I, I like to think about how we can cooperate and, uh, and work with um, uh, a lot of uh, companies. So, you know, for example, you could say, well, aren't you competing with WordPress? Because you could start a Rebel Mouse site from scratch. But I think, for example, Rebel WordPress gives you a lot of openness and being able to write your own PHP, et cetera, that we don't really want to do at Rebel Mouse. So we have a beautiful plugin for uh, WordPress so that it can take over your front page, but you mm. don't have to move the platform. So, um, yeah, but come like, on. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're targeting this towards ease of use and I'm, you know, a mom and pop business, for example, or, you know, a small media yeah. company, I'm not going to create a WordPress and a Rebel Mouse and a Tumblr. It's going to be an or, not an end. In that situation, I think we are competing with, and we think yeah. Rebel Mouse is a great solution. But we do see a huge amount of um, use cases where you're not starting something from new, you're upgrading something you had, and that we see a lot of great ways to play nicely and well and become a real uh, added bonus there. Now, so, when I'm in the um, editor here and I'm, you know, putting in a new post, how long can I make it? Can I, can I be making something that would be the equivalent of a blog post? Yes, and in fact, we really want to encourage that more and more. What we don't have right now, there's a couple, there's some features that would really bring that out. Our, we're working hard on the article pages. Um, 
we want to make an article page be just like a front page um, where you could begin, maybe the article page in this metaphor is this interview, and then you get an interesting comment. In the comment section, it'll be lost in the bottom, but the way we're building this architecture, you could get, we could get a great comment from a Howard Lindzen saying, hey, great interview, and you could put freeze that up at the top right. And so it takes this metaphor of a front page for anything and everything and applies it to the article page itself as well. So that doesn't exist now. What does exist now, and people are using it a lot, is you can do a long form blog post and it creates a really nice looking page for it. But we are early and we did launch intentionally early. And one of the things that I can't wait for us to launch, uh, which I think we're weeks away, is this next upgraded view of that article page. Um, and how much can I freeze? Like, am I freezing just one thing or can I freeze many things? How does that work? You can freeze, you can freeze many things. We're hopefully a week or two away from adding a feature that lets you freeze for X hours or days. Uh, or minutes. So you can say, so it'll be a lot easier to manage those decisions because you can say freeze this story at top for a week uh, and not have to remember to come back to it. Um, and then we'll use that signal to create really nice, uh, most popular and editorial features that uh, show all the stuff that only the stuff you've ever frozen. But yeah, you can have full control of that page. And someone like now this news actually uses the bookmarklet and they do feed in from Twitter, but they're often doing manual stuff because they're there all day editing it because there's a paid editor. And it's still like Catherine Zaleski is managing editor there. Uh, and she used to be at Washington Post and before that Huff Post. And she has some nice testimonials on how much easier this tool is to use than anything she's touched before. And what's the business model? Well, because we're powering the open web, that becomes a really natural pain, pain point. Everybody's used to paying for their website. So we want to make it, you know, around 10 bucks a month for an individual and around 25 bucks a month for a business. And we have some enterprise solutions that we'll get to later, but that makes it a very solid first business model for us. Uh, when we gain larger audience and the network effect is coming together, we want to build a solution for sponsored content because the storyline there uh, is that we're helping brands become good publishers. Like if you go to rebelmouse.com forward slash GE um, or Oakley, uh, we have IBM Watson. There's a bunch of big brands that are already playing with this. Um, and what they're seeing is, oh my God, this is in five minutes better than the efforts we've done for years. Uh, and it helps them be social publishers. It helps them bring out their best content and the most engaging content. And we want to be able to connect that to big uh, audiences. You know, So if we keep going with the startup, this uh, the, uh, startup week, uh, project for you, you guys could have a Rebel Mouse page, then IBM Watson could come by and say, Jason Calcana, I'd, I'd love to sponsor you. And you could get that notification and say, yeah, IBM Watson's a perfect one, and then pick content from them. So that's the second phase of our monetization and business model. Our first will be very clearly just as a SaaS business. Hmm. Here's You don't need to worry about your website. Rebel Mouse will power it. Um, so does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Um, and will the free will there always be a free version in your mind, or do you think you want to make it a paid community? Yes. Yeah. No, I want it to. Be, I want rebelmouse.com forward slash you to always be free forever. And I think there should always be ways for you to do an embed on your WordPress site or et cetera that is free, and then options that you can get by unlocking it. So I am a strong believer in freemium. I think that the story of the year is still in many ways draw something, showing us that we can have a viral growth curve and a viral revenue curve, and they don't have to one dampen the other. And so while it's not a guarantee that that's in Rebel Mouse's future, it's certainly our plan A and what we're working really hard to prove. And, and how does following work on here? Because it seems like this could become very addictive in a social way in the same way Tumblr yeah. is. But when I follow Paper Magazine here as an example, it says follow their Twitter. But how do I follow 
their rebel mouse? And is there going to be some sort of like feed of what I'm following on rebel mouse? Yes. Yeah, so we are, um, we're very close to releasing that. Yeah. Um, the feed of everyone that you know who's on Rebel Mouse. Right. We want to just make a couple things clear because the relationship with Twitter is extremely important to us. And so I have um, some friends and coworkers who we've spent a lot of time working together because of HuffPost, et cetera, and I'm lucky to have them uh, there at Twitter and we're working through the relationship, which is looking very positive. But you know, they really resent that Tumblr was taking the Twitter social graph and mm. then never pushing back into it again. Mm. And so when we get it right, you should have all these people you can follow that you're discovering that make your Twitter experience better because you're following better people on Twitter. But by following them on Twitter, you immediately realize that you've followed them on Rebel Mouse as well. Ah, so it's not two follows, it's one follow, it's a seamless follow. It's a seamless follow. Oh, that's interesting. Really, yeah, so as soon as you hit follow, boom, they should be in with your Rebel Mouse too. But we haven't stolen from the, from the social graph of Twitter. We're actually building it with them. Can't Twitter ban you from pulling all this information in? I mean, they have done that to other people, right? Well, that's part of why we haven't released uh, the follow mechanisms the way we had originally planned or the follow stream as mm -hmm. we had originally planned. They... Um, you know, we follow the display requirements. We're on the new API. Um, people from the pilot policy and platform teams have tweeted out how psyched they are about us doing those things. Mm. And if so it's just important we be, remain the gold standard. They want content to be syndicated. And what's better for them than a front page that is full of the expressions of tweets mm. uh, and done well? So. As long as we are very careful with those rules and we are very respectful to the relationship, I think we'll be fine. But, but you're display like are you displaying them? Like, don't, don't they force you to display them in their own, like, embed now? Um, the, the display requirements, you can Google Twitter display requirements, yeah. are extensive. Yeah. But they don't require straight embed. And they do, if you break it down, we spent quite a bit of work on this. Yeah. Um, you'll see that we've passed the display requirements. We show the Twitter avatar. We just basically, every rule there, we yeah. pass. So it's we've spent a lot of time on it, but it becomes an even more telling one, USA Networks launched charactercollage.com. Yeah. Uh, they were able to do that with literally like half a day of work on their side. And this would used to take them a long time. And then they get notified by the Twitter team. They've done the wrong policy guidelines, et cetera. So taking all that headache out of it is part of the model. Yeah. And I see here, it's, you, it looks almost exactly like it. It's got the reply, the retweet, and the favorite in the same order. It's yep. got the permalink and the icon with the, you know, mouse over it. And you actually even put a follow there, which is even extra gracious, I guess. <laughs> exactly. You notice that. Yeah. Yes. And what do you, what are you really going out of the way. What do you think about Twitter blocking down their ecosystem, being a little bit more regimented about it? Is that the approach you would have taken? Do you think it's necessary for them to build a business, or do you think they're overreaching? I think that it's fair to say that Twitter is finding itself. I think that it would probably be fine to say that they're in a sort of state like a teenager where they're not necessarily like giving the best long-term signals to everybody. Um, but that it's worth it, that they're an exciting teenager. <laughs> and it's worth going through a little bit of their back and forth. Um, I like that it feels to me they're ending up saying content syndication uh, it makes sense and it will always be a core value. It makes sense to me that they had to figure out what do you do about a Tumblr who's just pulling your follow graph, hitting your server like mad, and people who do that tend to leave you forever. Um, I think they had issues that they had to deal with. Hmm. And uh, looking back on the Huffington Post, what do you think they did that was so brilliant? I mean, aside from hire you and have really great technology on the publishing platform, what do you think they did that was so brilliant that made it succeed so quickly? Well, I credit a lot of Ken Lear and Jonah Peretti positioning 
uh, things well. And by position, I don't mean here's what we have. Let's spin it and position it as something else. It's what should we build that would just grow of its own like mad. And when you think about the a the day, the year that it started, you know, Jonah has this wonderful thing about how in those times bloggers were seen as weirdos in their pajamas. Right. And so you combine this addictive news with a perspective, the answer to left's answer to the Drudge Report, which was immediately going to be compelling, with this incredible storyline of what Larry David blogged. Hmm. And giving highly renowned celebrities, et cetera, a platform to write a single post once or twice a year. Um, and tying that storyline with the news um, was was just absolutely brilliant. And uh, how much of your how much of their success was based on SEO in your mind, um, and how much of Rebel Mouse's will be impacted by SEO versus social media? I mean, it seems like SEO has changed a lot in the last ten years, and now it feels like there's a social SEO yeah. that's going on that you guys are particularly brilliant at. Which is it? Is it SEO or uh, social? Which well, is more important? It's it's no doubt that five six years ago SEO was way more important. I mean, it was that was that was the thing, and you could get some additional traffic out of a dig. Facebook was still so tiny, um, but we were very proud with what we did with Dig. But the times have changed tremendously, and I think any company who puts SEO first right now um, is about five years behind in that sense because it really social does lead and whether Google fully admits it or not it's inevitable that social will be the beacon that guides page rank because people who tweet even if they don't look at Twitter's API the result of something that's tweeted out early is going to be a ton of inbound links and so rebel mouse um, We'll do better and better in SEO. We do okay now, but we've put all our efforts on social first, and then we're filling in the gaps. When social and SEO work wonderfully, um, which they often do, it's something where you hear a few people in the office talking about something, and you sort of curious about that, uh, so you Google it. And no matter which way you go, you end up at the right place. And I think Rebel Mouse is in a good place to hit that intersection as well. And do you think that Google at some point will say, hey, this is sort of like a search result. This is sort of automated. We, it's, you know, they'll ban it from the search results or de-emphasize it. They've always had this sort of like no collections rule where they've been a little bit harder on like not the original copy. Uh, how do you think yeah. about that? Well, we're not trying to game any of the stuff that's curated. So we're not creating permalinks for it. If you don't change the image, if you don't change the headline, we're, we're not even trying to index any of that. Where we think it's important for Rebel Mouse to do well in SEO uh, is with the original content, which more and more original content is being created. But sometimes original content is in the form that it's curated. So there are instances we look at where this collection of stories is by far the best answer to the, that story, that search query. Um, but we're not going to try um, to sort of ag aggregate into SEO. It, that, our SEO stuff will be much more about original content and it performing well. And that's better anyway because you have less pages indexed and only the original ones, you're just fighting with, the, you're, you're fighting with your strongest weapons. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so you raised $2.5 million uh, in October. Uh, I see SoftBank NEA first round. Uh, Chris Dixon, a lot of great people, Gary V, Howard Lindzen. Yeah. Um, how far out does that take you? And, you know, this seems like it would be a very, um, you'd be able to build this in an Instagram style way, maybe 10, 20 employees. Are you going to get big or are you going to try to take the Instagram approach of stay small and just, you know, do one thing really well? Um. I think we're a little bit in between. I will always want to be scrappy. I think 
my belief and my vision in the world is that small teams uh, are the are are what change the world. So I want us to stay really small and focused. That said, we are solving a pretty big problem when you think about making the open web uh, a better place. And we're working with a lot of different APIs. So it's a little bit different from Instagram, which had a very clear focused um, sing single literal, like take the photo, grab the follow stream, do the filters. Um, Rebel Mouse is a little more complicated, so it's in between. But as we, I would rather have the story be that we became enormous with a small team hmm. um, than we built an enormous team and later became enormous. Yeah. But that said, you know, it's a little bit hard. We had a great meeting with uh, the partner at SoftBank today, and I was proudly telling him how quickly we had scaled up since the investment. Um, and he said, oh, and when he heard the burn, he said, oh, you're you're not scaled up enough. Spend more faster. Yeah, that's so. typically how VCs think, right? Get big <laughs> because they win on grand slams and us as entrepreneurs, we can win on singles and doubles. Yes, exactly. So there will be some tension to resolve there, but I think that he's a, he's a wonderful guy. I'm super proud of the investors. I feel like it's in, the investors and advisors really understand what I'm doing and what we're doing as a team. Uh, and so taking advantage of our moment to have the best talent possible is great. Yeah, it feels like uh, you got a great you got a great team going there and continued success with it. Um, I think this is a startup really to watch. I'm feeling kind of dumb that I missed out on investing in it because I think it's great things to come. Um, and and what about um, designs? Because I noticed that you just you're changing that you can change the headline description and the yeah. body text, but I don't see like uh, Tumblr or WordPress templates and a third party marketplace for those things. It would seem to me that this Pinterest style does not appeal to everybody. Yeah. You, you have more templates coming? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, definitely. That's in our future. So we already have a little bit of an ecosystem. There's three companies now that appear to be doing nothing but customizing your Rebel Mouse. And it's surprising how much they can take these CSS rules and make mm -hmm. it look different. Um, but it's, you know, it's very much the beginning. I, I want an ecosystem to survive around Re Rebel Mouse and customizing it. And that goes beyond CSS, but also into jQuery plugins and et cetera. So that's something we'll definitely be seeing in 2013. Uh, listen, you've been a great guest. You're very frank and honest and uh, exposing a lot of the roadmap ahead. So I do appreciate that. Paul Berry, CEO of Thank you, Rebel Jason. Mouse. And uh, continued success. Everybody, please go sign up. Uh, for rebelmouse.com and give it a try. You'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. They know they're hiring developers. And as I always say, first name at companyname.com tends to work, huh, Paul? Yes, Paul at rebelmouse.com is me. And so if you're a great developer designer, what else do you need? Um, we're looking across the board. So um, people good in social and customer service, et cetera. We have not that many openings, but... Yeah. Um, it definitely send uh, your applications my way, and I'll get them to the right people. On the team. You Manhattan or Brooklyn? Where are you based? We're in Soho in Manhattan. Oh, that's a, wow. Talk about a great place to work, people. Yes. Be in Soho. Yes, and Go check out. And some. right here with Lair Ventures, so it's pretty yeah. awesome. That's uh, Ken Lear. Seems like a smart cat. I, uh, I don't actually oh, yeah. even, don't know him so well, but uh, I gotta get. I gotta go have a coffee with him. You do. He's a hero to me. <laughs> well, listen. Continued success. I'm really. You know, I, when you. I see something and I know it's gonna work, I just immediately get them on the phone and say, "Come on the show." And I saw this literally. I don't know. Friday ago, and I said, "Wow, that's gonna work." So continued success. Right. And um, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on this week in startups.